Hi! <laughs> Welcome back to Crochet Creations in episode number 45. Well, grab a cup and join me. I have uh, Jamaica Me Happy and a little bit of hazelnut creamer in that. And I have a whole bunch of crochet and knit works in progress and a couple finishes and a new make along to announce. <laughs> So the first thing that I normally talk about in a regular episode is my squeaky chair. <laughs> okay, so don't move. Don't move. Don't move. All right. Last week's Christie's Closet D-Stash over on the Facebook page, you know, the place where you click the announcements and all the shenanigans are going on over there. We have a couple new ones. Well, this week's D-Stash was for Isaac Mizrahi in the color Carlton and one of the signature Daisy stitch markers. There were three skeins of this. The winner was Monica. So congratulations to Monica. This week's D stash is a Lion brand ice cream. And this one is 100% acrylic. I believe, let's read it. I believe it is, yes. It is a three light and this color is banana split. And it's 394 yards in one skein. That's gonna make something big enough for a baby, no doubt in my mind. I am currently making a blanket out of this. And um, I'm not working on it right now. I'm working on orders. So it, it's on hold and it will not be shown today because it doesn't have any progress. <laughs> but it's nice to talk about something you're using at the moment and I love it. It's very easy to use. Um, so, back to another make along. Last week, I have to look at my notes this, this time. I am so busy with everything that it just takes me a minute. Okay, so last week, um, Hook and Stitch Live was on the 17th, and Kim and I from the Crafty Nomad had a live, and we went over um, our Stitch and Time make-along. It's a vintage make-along. It's running from now, from when it started was September 1st through November 21st. So you still have time to join in if you haven't already. We have uh, three or four grand prizes, maybe more, that we're going to be giving away for that finish. Um, there will be at least one more progress winner um, between now and then. And I do have... Uh, yeah... I do have an update on my blanket. I'm doing the Navajo blanket, but I'm doing it in scraps, and I'm no, I'm in no hurry. I I figure I will probably be working on this for a whole year, and um, the only time I work on it is when I just want to do something that I don't have to think about, and so um, my scrap blanket is getting there. I do have one entire diamond done now <laughs> but yeah I'm just doing whatever scraps so if I make a hat and I have some scraps left over I'm adding it to my blanket and there's quite a few half skeins in the bag that are going in soon however I did choose to use a gray and a, a purple marl <laughs> excuse me on the edging so this I have enough of this to do on the other end when I decide it's long enough and I'm also using that same color in the one row that goes across to finish a diamond so that is a chosen um, 
I'm using the Stitch Studio, and that's the gray and purple marl. That's going to go. That's my main color, but I don't have a lot of it. So you just need a little bit at the beginning and a little bit at the end, and then one row across. So that is my Stitch in Time blanket, and I believe I will probably still be making it next year. <laughs> couple of you are making it with me and you're way ahead of me so um, on the stitch um, not the stitch on the on the um, hook and stitch live show we will be getting together this Saturday again our normal episode would have been on Halloween so we still are keeping our date and we are having a Halloween party that day so if you'd like to join us over on the Crafty Nomad channel, it is uh, going to be on 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, for approximately two hours. We'll, we'll be drawing prizes on that show for Halloween. All you have to do is be present to win and then comment in the comments and be the random winner. And uh, so Kim has three treat bags and I have treat three treat bags to give away that day so I hope you join us um, I am going to be hooking up with a new uh, YouTube channel and that is with Stephanie at Stephanie's yarn escape all the people and all the links that I talk about today will be down in the description box so you can find Stephanie over there. Her link will be below. We've decided to do a progressive mystery crochet along. <laughs> what does that mean? Does anybody know? I don't know. Well, I do. Progressive is something that I've done before. Um, last Vlogmas, I gave you a progressive uh, box that every day I added an item to that and at the end it was the final box that is kind of what is going to happen with this mystery crochet along it will progressively get more interesting as we go along um, there will be um, prizes on Stephanie's channel that will be separate from my prizes you can enter both you can enter just hers, you can enter just mine, but it would be good if you entered your progress because you never know when we're going to do what because it's a mystery. <laughs> so we have decided to uh, make the announcement today. It was going to be starting November 1st. It will be running through the end of the year. So the last week will be week 9 and that carries over into January 2nd. The following week, we'll pick all the grand prize winner, winners. So each week, we'll come on our channels and talk about that week's clues or whatever's going on. Some weeks, there might not be hardly anything going on, and other weeks, there might be. So that might keep you interested in popping on over to both of our channels and seeing what's happening. Um, I am working on mine. It is a mystery. It is not done. I'm doing it as we go. <laughs> so I'm using a Stitch Studio Earth Tone Tweed. It is a four medium. In the announcement, I tell you that you need at least 1,100 yards of a four medium worsted. That may or may not be way too much, um, but I know it'll be enough for what I'm making. If you ten, if you choose to do your item bigger, then you may need more. But just as long as you know that the size that I'm making is up approximately 1,100 yards, then we should have enough to start uh, doing our project together. And I am also using a K 6.5 millimeter hook on that. So if you'd like to join us um, in my Facebook group under the announcements tab is the new announcement for that mystery make-along. And um, 
also that's the same post you will be posting all of your comments for progress etc the questions can be answered there um, Stephanie has her own post in her announcements on her Facebook group which I'll also link below so I think that's about all I can tell you about that right now I hope all of you are excited for us um, we we are we are very much excited we're we have talked about the fact that we learned from our grandmothers and we wanted to kind of honor our grandmothers by creating something in their honor so the name of our project this time is grandma's forever hug that doesn't give away what it is so I think we're gonna be doing a series with uh, that in mind <clears throat> so I hope you'll enjoy it and uh, join us so it'll be nine weeks all right so going on let's see what do I have to show you today well I have a cocoon I'm working on this is a commission order and I'm making it in Barcelona which is a loops and threads yarn it's a five bulky it is a hundred percent acrylic and these are big skeins these skeins run 999 at Michaels and they recommend a J six millimeter and there is well let me see 328 yards in a skein seven ounce skein that's a lot of yarn in there so I figured that two of these was gonna make a cocoon and this lady asked me to make one for her daughter for Christmas so all I did was ask her to measure from her elbow to her other elbow and then from the shoulder down to just below her buttocks and then I was just gonna do something in that length so this is what I'm doing it's a long rectangle and it is done in half double crochets and basically I'm just going to make the rectangle and um, sew the sides up to make to form sleeves and then do cuffs and I think I decided on my color last month I I uh, ordered some premier every day in uh, some other colors and one of them was a maroon hopefully my chair won't make too much noise and I brought one of them out and I thought you know this might work because I really think I should have it darker so if I put the two up it will be a little bit darker tell me what you think if that would if you think that one would work because I have a couple more colors of this but I was thinking that would work for the cuffs <clears throat> I love reading all of your comments in the comment box I, I just love it it's so much fun to um, do a to do a video and then wait and see who watches and you don't know who if they don't leave a comment you know <laughs> um, I also have a knit hat that I've been working on now I do a lot of hats and I've been talking about what's gonna happen next year with my hats hats and more hats because I've been challenging myself to do at least a hat a week for 2020 and I have done that a little bit less in October but I'm uh, I've done 50 so I only need to do two to make my 52 for this week or this year I mean so I am ahead and I'm, I'm sure I'll do that because you know I have hats that are on the on the needles or on the hook at the moment so there's nowhere to put anything over here so anyway what I was thinking about next year was not ending that 
I still want to challenge myself to make hats. But I think what I'm going to do next year is every month, I'm going to challenge you guys to make a hat. But I'm going to make one in knit and one in crochet in the same yarn every month. And then I'm going to get three rolls of that yarn when I buy them. And so my challenge will be to make one in knit, one in crochet, and then give you the third skein in that month. So that's what my plan is for next year. So I will not be um, getting rid of that make-along. And I will pick a bonus prize again. So next year, if you have a hat made in every single month of the year, your name will be entered into a bonus prize. So um, I just haven't decided what. So here's my hat I'm making with the clay tone Premier Everyday. And I just love Premier Everyday. This one happens to be one of the tonals. And I made the crochet version already and when I get done with both I will probably show them again but this one happens to be an, a hat out of a knit simple magazine where the top of it is uh, cinched so you can wear it as a messy bun or a regular hat so it is out of that magazine a 2012 magazine so yes I'm getting somewhere on it I've been working on it at work at lunch a little bit <coughs> and I finished the little black dress so I thought I would bring the Christmas dress back out this one is a crocheted dress from a couple of patterns now the top is one pattern out of my uh, Leisure Arts book with the Rebecca Lee patterns in it. I've made them so many times I remember the book without bringing it out. <laughs> but I did the top of the dress. You've seen it before, but I thought I'd bring it out today because I'm lacking in product, <laughs> content, whatever. So I'm bringing it out today because it's time to get it back on the crochet hook and get it done. So the top was one of the patterns. The sleeves is my idea because I like that. It looks cool on a Christmas dress. I'm going to be adding some stuff here. I don't know what yet. The skirt is another pattern. Um, it has some clusters. Some See? And then I'm going to go back and do more white on the bottom of the skirt to give it the candy cane more of a candy cane look so I'm getting there I just have to do you know probably about that many more rows so that's going to be like one two three probably four rows of cluster and four rows of the bracket and then we'll go back to white and we'll do the fancy bottom panel, which I have picked out from another pattern. So I'm kind of, you know, building my own little dress. The red I've been using is Discover. I got this. It's a department, what is it? Department 71 yarn from Hershner's and it has a halo and it has that beautiful sparkle look, but it is really soft. That is not sparkle. It has 70% um, uh, polyester, 20% acrylic and nylon. So it's really uh, workable and soft for the baby. And this is for my new granddaughter for her Christmas uh, photos. Her mother wants to have a homemade dress. And I've been using the other Hershner's Baby Soft um, for the other one, for the other color. And I don't even think I have, oh yes I do. It is the Baby Cloud Soft. And you get that on Hershner's. And it comes in a lot of colors, but it, it has that real soft halo on it. 
and I've got it in many colors, but it's got a twist, so it almost looks like there's a sparkle in it too, but it's just a twist on the yarn. So that is one of my favorite baby yarns from Hersner's that I've used in uh, many colors. Um, some real nice purple and green and teals. So that's getting there. Now that I brought it out, I'll be sure to get working on it and get it done. Although I'm in no hurry because I have till December and there's only the skirt left. It's not that much. So now we're going to go back to the cow blanket. We have talked about this cow blanket in a couple videos. I'm keeping it in one of my gifts from Al Gray. Uh, this is a tote bag she made me for my birthday. It's absolutely gorgeous. It has lavender inside. Yes, I just love, love, love this bag. Nice and big for the big skeins of Stitch Studio by Nicole I'm using for the cow blanket. This also has a nice halo and um, lots of yarn in these babies. And I saw this in Michael's the other day. So even though this is an older skein, they have them. So it's wonderful. These are 100% acrylic, 4 medium, and they have 744 yards in a skein. And it's plenty enough to make this blanket. So it, the second color I'm using is Elephant Gray, and this one, uh, where's that? It's a Pound of Love by Lion Brand. So I caked some up so I can do the graph, because this is a graph, and I have it in my Knit Companion on my iPad. So, um, I can keep track of what row I'm on, and I am now up to row 40, which ended a couple more spots, and there's actually a section of three um, just white rows, so I can whip off those real quick and start the second section. So technically, if you have 120 rows, I've done a third of the blanket already. So I've been saying to myself, you know, what I really like is if I have enough time, sit down, do 20 rows, and then put it away. Next time, do 20 rows and put it away. And then you have a quarter of your blanket done because each quarter is 40 rows. So there's my first quarter. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm like, yes! And she even asked me, she said, are you working on my blanket yet? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> but it's not that bad. I've gotten the hang of it. And with the Knit Companion, you can move your highlighter color down each row on the graph. And it's, it's perfect. So I really like that. In fact, it's not even the graph I'm using. I'm using the line by line. It tells me to do 18 in color A, do seven in color B, then go back to color A, and then you just keep reading across each row. And the highlighter keeps you keeps you where you are. So that is cool. I got the cow blanket from Ravelry, and it was a paid pattern, and I downloaded it into my Knit Companion. So that is a very fun, um, uh, yeah, blanket that I'm doing for somebody. So behind me, is Claire and she's wearing a cowl today that I just thought I'd bring out a couple things every now and then and show you that were in my Etsy shop so this cowl is done in a gradient it is the virus meets granny and it, it, I what I did was I used one skein and when I ran out that's when I decided to end the 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 scar so that is um a tutorial by fiber spider i'll link it below but this is how it came out and that was one skin i think that that video just ended so this is the soho gradient 
and I bought this from Willow Yarns and they had them at one point you could buy every single skein so I did I bought a bunch of colors and they they are um, a big skein this is 58% cotton and 42% acrylic I did not see this for sale anywhere again so I don't know I really don't know if you can find it but it is a three light and all of them have this uh, change of colorway on them so I just thought I'd share that with you and if you see this yarn anywhere grab it they're they're pretty cool they're really nice um it's a three light so it's not real real fine but it comes out really nice in this pattern and real loose that was what Claire was wearing now this video did end and it started again I don't know if it's going to do it again so I'm going to go on to my last finish and then I'm going to call it a day and try to splice them together so last uh, time okay let's see if we can do this last video like this I don't know if we can or not but last time you saw this sweater I wasn't done with it and I am now so this is done in puppy which is a yarn B three light it's a gorgeous gorgeous yarn um, I ended up using a pattern out of this adorable baby cardigan book and uh, this was done on well, actually it was done in this pattern I just did it in one color rather than striped because I haven't done color changes yet like that but I will so I finished it up and I changed the sleeves and put a, a puff sleeve on it I'm really proud of this one so so soft and then in the same skein now <laughs> yes the skeins have a lot of yardage on them like I said it's a sweet delight prints called puppy it has 377 yards on one of these and I have already made the sweater out of it I started the hat today I don't have it done um, because I just started it but I'm going to show you that and if I finish it I may not be able to show you um, it might be already given gifted or whatever to the new owner because I have been requested by my mom to make something for someone in the horse club so I had this sweater on the needles and I thought what can I do to make this sweater girlish because she said do I have something for a girl and I didn't really and I thought well I have this sweater but will she think it's for a girl if it's blue and yellow specks so I went ahead and um, started a pair of booties for someone who is in a horse club <laughs> and uh, this is that pattern that I used in August for booties that was whoop <laughs> that was made in a horse style well guess what <laughs> you can't even see how cute they actually are I don't think but I did them the very first time that I've ever did them so I'm I'm trying I'm not an amigurumi person <laughs> but they did come out quite adorable and I am gonna make them again only next time I think I will move the eyes up on the head farther than she told me to put them on row seven and I disagree 
I, I don't think they're up high enough. And yet it still looks like a little horse. I really think that they came out cute. Now hopefully I can get this video spliced together properly. And apparently I had a little bit of technical difficulties. And we all know why, because Chris is not computer savvy. <laughs> but I'm getting it done. Somehow or another, I am able to get content made between people I know helping me. <laughs> so thanks all for joining me today. I hope you like this video and thanks if you do and you haven't some subscribed yet please hit that little subscribe button and the bell to be notified every time I upload a crazy video <laughs> I will see you soon in my next addictions video and um, talk to you later oh I'll see you Thursday night in my Facebook group for our Trick or Treat Live. And if you're not entered in that, oh my goodness, where have you been? Get on over to my Facebook page. Find the announcements. Join if you're not already joined. And one of us will, uh, I, I would probably be me, but I will accept you as a member. And you can go and enter into the Trick or Treat because you got to have numbers. you got to have those six numbers to be able to play. You don't have to be um, available or present to win that night. If you win, if your numbers are correct, or if you have more numbers than anybody else that are correct, someone else will be drawing your prize for you, but you will be able to claim it later. Um, you just won't be able to pick. So... Um, that's going to be a great night. See you all then. That'll be 8 p.m. Thursday the 29th. And uh, talk to you later. Bye-bye.